Hey guys, Reploid Bill. It's time to unbox the Eternian Goddess. I am looking forward to this figure quite a bit, actually, so let's do this. As usual, we're going to start off here with the packaging, because that's how we start all of these things, as we talk about the packaging. And as, as I'm sure, it gets a little old for me to constantly say the packaging is fantastic. It is. It is. The presentation of these things is fantastic. It's very retro. It's very much on the perfect old-style 80s card. And the back of it has absolute fantastic artwork. That is really cool. And this time, the artwork actually matches the storyline, which makes me feel like maybe every other character has matched the storyline. Now, I did not realize this before, but the Eternian Goddess, which most people now refer to as Tila. This is not Tila, at least not in the way that we would come to understand her. Because the original storyline for what was going on here is kind of wild. But we know that I'm going to cut the top off of this, I'm going to keep this, and we're going to open her. So let's open her because I also want to see if this is a new comic book. Alright, so... Instructions like normal, this tells you what parts of the character can be swapped out, what can't be swapped out, so on and so forth, which that's important because we've talked about this before. Part of the cool thing about this line is that you can take off the boots, take off the arms, different things like that, and you can really kind of customize these characters if you want to. They're very easily kit bashed. So, there's that. It is a different comic book. It's one that I don't have. This one is called... Rock in a hard rock in a hard place, and as far as I could tell, looks like there's a whole bunch of different uh, fakers, and they're attacking He-Man, and then it looks like there's something with a uh, uh, stink or I don't know exactly what's going on. I'll of course have to read it, uh, which is something I've been doing quite a bit of, actually, because I picked something up that's pretty cool. But we'll talk about that here in a minute. First impression here with the color and everything is that this is pretty solid. Let me get a look at the face because you know that that's a big thing for me. Uh, she's got a little bit of pouty lips going on, but solid face. Solid face. I, I do like it. I do think she's pretty solid. I think that works really well. I th I'm big on the whole faces thing. I need, I need the faces to be decent. I don't like awkward faces on the figures. Uh, looks like she's got a pretty cool weapon and a shield. Let's cut her out of here because we're going to talk about her for a little while. All right, so quick first impressions real quick. Uh, they're quick first impressions real quick. Sure. The staff thing, the snake staff, pretty cool. Uh, I'm, I like this, I really do. Uh, I'll get a better shot of it when we actually review the figure in general. And the buckler is interesting because it's really just a little bitty buckler. But we're going to set those to the side here. Um, she's solid. She's really cool, really solid. She bends well course she's got the same range of movement that a lot of the other characters get right now uh all of them actually in this line that's one thing that i gotta be real about there's only one character in the entire line that hasn't had the same movement as others in terms of the ones that i've got and that was the sorceress and that's because she has the wings so she can't sit the same way as some of the other characters and speaking of sorceress that is pretty much what she actually is. And boy, is there some interesting stuff that I learned about this character. Specifically because I've, I got something recently that allowed me to kind of go back and enjoy the original stories, the original ideas for these figures. This. This is He-Man 
and the Masters of the Universe, the mini comic collection, and it's all of it, and it's big. And I mean it's, it's big. This is a chunk of book. And one of the things that I read in here that I was not expecting, it's actually the story that I currently happen to be on right now, is that, well, for one, the idea of Tila, the idea that we have of Tila, not the same thing in the original context. Like, wow. Okay? She was originally the sorceress. And she was holding on to a set of weapons, okay? Uh, weapons and armor, like these ancient relic weapons and armor. And her task was to find a hero that she could give them to that would help him or her to defend Castle Grayskull and maybe one day actually ascend the throne and become the king or whatever. And Skeletor captures her and siphons off her energy into a type of, into a spell. He siphons off part of her energy and his, his intent is to create a clone of the, of the, of the, Eternian goddess. He will then use that clone, raise it, so it's it's going to be an infant, it's going to be a baby, an infant, okay? He's going to raise it to be his wife and then use it to take over Eternia and Castle Grayskull. Hmm... Comic books? This is kind of a messed up storyline. Well, what ends up creating Tila is that the warrior goddess, the Eternian goddess, is being drained of her, her power. And while she's being drained of her power, Man-at-Arms interrupts this process. He interrupts the spell. He kicks in the door and starts causing trouble. When he does that, he gets rid of he gets he gets rid of Skeletor and whatnot, and s just so happens that while the spell was interrupted, part of it did work, and that's what created Tila. But she's not green, and she doesn't have all of the goddess's powers because the spell was not complete. So it's only part of uh, it's only part of that energy. And it was enough to create a clone, but not enough to create a perfect clone. So now there's Tila, which is the clone, and the goddess, which is the original. And the goddess bears no ill will towards the clone or anything like that, but can't take care of her because she has other responsibilities, which is why she leaves that clone with Man-at-Arms, who she sees as a noble man, especially having proved himself when he kicked in the door and helped her, and he goes off to raise Tila, who will become the warrior woman. And while that's all good and fine, I can't get over the fact that Skeletor was going to clone her so that he could raise her as his wife. This is a part of the mythology that I'm kind of glad we left behind, because it's, uh... Wow. Let's get a closer look at this figure. Okay, here's our first look at this character more close up, okay? And I like this a lot, actually. I like the color here. I like the silver and the silver down on the boots. I don't mind that the boots match this little snake thing here. And I actually like the snake armor in, ter in terms of this character. When I get my other one, which is going to be the, no the more normal one, the Tila, Tila is just going to stay as Tila. But I really like this design here 
for being the goddess, for being the Eternian goddess. Now, she does have a type of buckler thing that she can hold, but, like, I don't think I care in terms of this character. I don't think I'm going to be using this. I personally find this to be what she should use. This scepter thing is cool. It is legit cool. It is way cool. It is awesome. Uh, I really like this quite a bit, actually, and I cannot get it to focus in, uh, but it is a really cool piece. I'm going to put it in her hand real quick. You know, with me, a uh, staff like this, I personally think it should go all the way down to the floor. It does not. It does not. But I think that we can kind of get over it on this one because I feel like part of her design in general, and I'm having a lot of trouble with her knees. There we go. we we'll turn her legs a little bit. It's on that ball joint. I'm going to kind of turn her knees and I'm gonna, kind of going to put her two hands on the staff. I'm going to see if I can get some sort of action poses like that because maybe that will really help for this kind of design. So if I go like this, if we put it in her hands here, and I'm having a lot of trouble, as you can see. Hands are solid, uh, but the staff is also a little windy. But if we put her something like this, maybe we'll get away with something like that where she can have the staff and she can go into a pose and maybe that's really strong. I don't know. Um, I'll mess with her for a little while. But all in all, I think that she's going to be a solid piece. And of course, got her standing here next to the Battle Cat. You can kind of get an idea of her size. And we got the He-Man back there, the Warrior He-Man. Here's regular He-Man coming into frame here with her. Give you an idea of her overall size. And, of course, here's the Sorceress, who I, you know I love the design for the Sorceress. So there's her standing next to this one. And the Sorceress staff, I think, is about the same size. In fact, let's, uh, let's ask that question now, shall we? Are you about the same? No. Uh, the Goddess staff is actually shorter than the other staff. So that's something, that's something in general as well. So yeah, um, like I said, I think that I do like her with the staff. I think that in terms of displaying her, I'm going to keep that battle armor on her. And I think I am going to keep this staff. So maybe I'll find a pose where she can kind of stand something like that. Maybe she'll, I know she's going to be over here at Castle Grayskull for a while now because that's where these characters have been. Uh, currently, my current setup leads so that we'll move He-Man over here. This He-Man in general. I'll put her here like this, maybe. Uh, maybe, because this is where we have our stuff currently. So, let me, let me adjust her a little bit here. Maybe something to this extent will put her in there. Either, either way, I know that she's going to be over here. I don't know to the extent of how. I'll work on it. Uh, overall impressions, I think she's really solid. I think the character's really cool and really cool to have it. I'm definitely going to focus on the staff rather than focusing on the shield. And that's the closer look at her. And that's Tila. That's the warrior goddess. That's the Eternian goddess. That's, I mean, most people are going to reference her as Tila. That's what we've come to know her as. But this was the Eternian goddess. This is, of course, from the Origins collection. And I did find a spot for her. She's in Castle Grayskull. She's at the top up here. So that's pretty cool. Um, that's it. Not much else to talk about. Uh, we have more unboxings coming, and we also have a set of videos to go across the shelves one at a time to get rid of material because collection is always growing, collection is always expanding, collection is always on its way out the door as well. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to do a series of videos going over the shelves. We're going to start at the top shelf. I will basically take everything off the shelf 
clean the shelf, put everything back onto the shelf, because that's another thing about collecting, guys. Gathers dust. Even even if you set them up in glass cases and everything like that, you can't just you can't just never attend to them. In fact, sometimes I've done a couple panning shots over the over the stuff, and I've I've been like, man, that's kind of dusty. Because if you don't attend to the collection often, which that's another excuse, I guess, for constantly bringing things into the collection and bringing things out of the collection and constantly rearranging and fixing things up and whatnot. You gotta clean it, you gotta clean the shelves. So I think I'm gonna start at the top shelf, work my way down maybe an episode at a time and decide things that are leaving the collection, kind of reorganize the shelves, and then we'll go into tearing into these boxes. Oh. This is what I'm talking about. There are entire boxes of materials that have not made it onto the shelf. And some of these materials are really cool. I've got Kyle Rayner Green Lantern, which is definitely something that's going to go onto the shelf. Look at this, I have a Wonder Woman that is not on the Wonder Woman shelf right there. And she's a good one too. She's a solid Wonder Woman that is not, not a part of the Wonder Woman shelf. I have a really, really good DC 52 Superman. Oh wow, that, that's like that's like really good. I like, no, that's a Rebirth. That's a Rebirth Superman that is not on the shelf, and he's a pretty good one, too. That's a good sculpt. Uh, it looks like I've got a Professor Xavier in here. Oh, man. Original Batman. We're talking first appearance, surgical gloves Batman. Yeah, there's a lot of cool stuff in here. Like, a lot of cool stuff, and some bizarre stuff, too. Look at that. We have, we have the Christmas... Scary Mary Jane, and it is. That's that's the that's the Christmas Mary Jane figure. Ugh. It is like, oh my gosh, that is that is terrible. <laughs> so not everything in here uh gets like a happy ending, gets to go up on the shelf. Some of this stuff is probably probably going bye-bye. But the fact of the matter is I still have like four boxes of material that has never gone up on the shelf because I never really finished off the shelves. Remember, we were doing all those videos and we just kind of stopped. So it's time to it's time to readdress. It's time to go down the shelves one at a time, figure out what's leaving the shelf, what needs to be moved into the garage shelving that's being put up, and what in these boxes need to go up on the shelf, what stays, what goes. And there's still a couple of items that we haven't discussed in terms of unboxing or opening for that matter because I've got a Spock that needs unboxed and we definitely have to look at the Enterprise that's sitting up here because that's a Playmates Enterprise. Talked a little bit about it on the, uh, on the, on the uh, pickup video, but we didn't really go over it 100% and kind of check it out and things like that. And just, uh, we also didn't discuss, I found a Panthor like a uh, a really cool 2000, 2002, 2003 Panthor, the 2000 X series Panthor. Uh, it's it's really cool, actually. Like really cool. And of course, there's still all this stuff to talk about. All these boxes that we gotta open, and a Tila. I got the Tila. Uh, I'm pointing at it. You can't even see it. I got it. Uh, she arrived in the mail. Version 2 Tila arrived in the mail, so she's going to be ready for unboxing as well, and she's fantastic. I don't know what that's about. I really don't. It's not on my other figures. Maybe it's because of how I got her. I had to order her, and I had to order her kind of special. So, I don't know, unless this is just kind of something that's appearing on the new boxes. I don't know. But regardless of that, one way or another, she's really solid and we've got her. Uh, I don't have anything else from her set, her collection. It looks like a Merman, and there's a Skeletor and a He-Man that come in her wave, and I don't have any of those. So, I guess... 
Once I get another one of those, I'll have an idea as to what that sticker is on the back of the box, or maybe somebody's cool enough to just tell me right now. Maybe somebody already knows what that's about, and uh, that's it. That's it. We're going to get out of here. I think this video has gone on long enough. Later on. I have spoken. Take what you will from it.